I swear for God, I got a word for you. Somebody say, this is the master class. And today, I'm learning about the danger and the power of I am. Everybody's got Genesis 1 and 26? Yes, sir. All right, read for me. One, two, ready to read. Okay, do me a favor. Let me get everybody to stand real quick. Yes, Why well, I got to stand? You don't have to. I'm just asking you to. Oftentimes, I want you to appreciate the things that we have that we don't call blessings like legs, like feet, like ankles. Yes. And I want you to read this as robustly as you can. One, two, ready, read. God said. God did what he said. Listen to what our father said. Let us, who's us? The Trinity. Let us make man in our image. That word man is not male, it is mankind. So it literally means man and woman. Let us make mankind in our image. And we don't just want them to have our image, we want them to have our likeness. Then we followed up with Hebrews 4 and 12 just to drop another anchor. For the word of God is quick. Now, I need y'all to catch the words that I highlighted. The word of God is what? Quick. Okay, and it's what? Powerful. And it's what? Sharper than any two edged sword. Peep this, piercing even into the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. And we're gonna even get them joints and the marrow. And it is a discerner. Somebody say discerner. discerner. Of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Here's what I want to tell you because you and I are made in God's image and God's likeness. We have more similarities than we realize. That's right. That you are actually a miniature G-O-D. Uh-oh. Don't let it strangle you. Get a hold of it. Amen. If my father is a win and I am his son, then I have to be a win because he's a win. If my father is a God, then I have to be a little G-O-D. Not one that needs to be worshipped, but one that has power transferred in his life from his daddy. I am somebody. It's not just that, though. There are a lot of God's attributes that you have that if you don't know how to use them for yourself, you'll use them against yourself inadvertently. I read to you that God's word is sharper than a two-edged sword. God's word, the word that comes out of God's mouth, which is now our B-I-B-L-E. Somebody say, it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharp. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharp. Somebody say, it pierces. It pierces. And say, that word, that word is a discerner. Say this with me. My words, My words are like a two-edged sword. They are, they are damaging and destructive, and destructive or, or creative, creative and constructive. And constructive. Come on now. I'm going to walk this one today. I'm going to drop 99,000 tons of revelation on you today. Your words that come out of your mouth, whether you meant them or did not mean them, your words cannot decipher whether or not you meant them. Your words have been programmed by God to move something in the universe. Why? Because when God said whatever God said, when God said what he said, when he said what he said, something always moved. God ain't never spoke and something didn't move. And you need to know that you never speak without something moving. And just because you don't see it moving don't mean it ain't moving. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. God said and then things happen. Let there be light. And guess what? Boom. There was light. Firmament separated. Firmament got separated. When God spoke, things happened. What you to understand, God transferred that same ability to you and me. But because we have not went to the school of language, the school of thought, the school of talk, we do more damage to ourselves than we do blessing ourselves. But we're changing that today in this master class because your mouth can be damaging or, and destructive. Or here's, here's what I've learned. I can use my mouth to be creative and constructive. In other words, your words have supernatural powers. If God's words have supernatural powers and we're made in his image and likeness, your words have supernatural powers. But here's what blessed me that I have not heard many pastors, preachers, teachers, or ministers elaborate on. Your words have discernment powers. Now, I don't expect you to clap because discernment is not a big word. It's not a word we use anymore, but, but you need some discernment. Some of you would not be in half the mess you was in if you had tapped into your discernment. Oh, and it was speaking, you just didn't listen to it. God tried to give you some clue about that person, but no, nah, you got to find out for yourself. 
You know, because you're here for a good time, not for a long time, dummy. Amen, somebody? Eternity is too long to get wrong. And when you start discerning the stuff, you will miss a lot of stuff you ain't even got to go through. You ain't going to clap, amen, because you got, you, you got pushed to the side because I saw your spirit when you came through the door. Amen, somebody? See, you can't mess with a person that's got discernment. And please don't let our smile fool you. Don't, don't let our handshake fool you. A lot of us are just like Jesus. We know you, Judas, but we still going to let you sit at the table and break bread with us. But need not think we have not peeped your game and know your heart. Discernment is one of the most powerful gifts Pete, this that every believer has, but most believers don't use. That's right. That's right. I want to fire you up today to trust the God inside of you. And when God gives you discernment, you trust that discernment. You driving down the road and we say something tell me to go that way. Honey, that ain't something. That's discernment connected to the Holy Ghost. Go that way. I apologize, I'm getting quite presumptuous. I'm assuming that you know what discernment is. I'm so passionate. Can I give you a definition of discernment? Here's a definition of discernment. The quality of being able to grasp and then comprehend what you've grasped. What is obscure, what is hidden, teach PT and what is unseen. And you got that. I need you to know what you got, folks. Folks, you got this. You, you got this in you. It's the quality of being able to grasp, reach up, grasp it, and then look at it and say, you know what? I can make sense out of this. I can see what is obscure. I can see what is hidden. I can see what is unseen when I tap into my discernment. Can I go deeper? See, what you discern AKA what you believe and what you see about yourself, about your life and about your future is gonna come out of your mouth. That's right. That's when you speak, I can tell what you discern about yourself. On, when you say what you say about your life, I can tell whether or not you've got discernment or whether or not you are speaking destructively. And the enemy loves to use this power against us because let me tell you something, without knowledge and wisdom, people perish. But today you're not gonna perish, you're gonna prosper. I was looking at Proverbs 18 and 21, one of my favorite passages in the Bible. It says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'll never forget the first time I read this. I said, God, why did you put death before life? I said, God, you could have easily said life and death are in the power. I said, God, why did you put death first? He said, I put death first because most folks, before they figure out how to use their tongue, they have smoked so much death over their life, death over their finances, death over their relationship, death over themselves, death, because we, we, are, we, are, we are defaulted to death. What? Ever since the fall of man, we are defaulted to death. So you say stupid stuff over your life, not knowing that if you keep saying that stuff, it's going to manifest on you, in you, and through you. Then I went to Exodus, the third chapter, 13, 14. I'm getting excited. Pick this. And Moses said, there's a whole lot of said in here. I want y'all to pay attention how we have to say certain things. Moses said unto God, behold, when I come into the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you. They're going to say to me, what is his name? I'm about to drop, I'm about to drop a million tons of revelation. Moses says, I'm, I'm going to go tell these people that you want me to lead them, but I know these people. I know the minute I tell them God sent me, they're going to like, if God sent you, what is his name? And Moses said, God, watch this. I know you, but I don't know your name. <laughs> Moses confessed, I know you. I've been walking with you. I've been talking. Man, you spoke through the burning bush. You've done some amazing things. But I must confess, I know you, but I don't know your name. Might I submit to you that many believers know God, but they still don't know his name? Oh, I'm sorry. You thought God was his name. <laughs> it's not. God is not God's name. Oh, somebody get some knowledge in here. God is not God's name. God is a description of who he is. He is God, but God is not his name. Oh, y'all looking, y'all looking strange in here. What kind of car you drive, mother? Brand. Nissan. Nissan. She about to, she about to prophesy a Honda in here. She drives a Nissan. Notice she didn't say car. That's right. I didn't say what kind of car you drive, mother, and she say a car. 
I didn't say, mother, mother, what's the name of the car you drive? She said, a car. Her car has a name. Car is not the name of the car. Y'all missing it. Car is a description of what the car is, but it's not the car's name. Does anybody get this? God's name is not God. Thank you, sister. I appreciate you and James. Say that. Say, God's name is not God. So Moses says, I, I don't know your name, but I need to know your name to convince these folks that you called me to lead you. And would you listen to what God said? It's hard for me to stand there because I love revelation. And God said to Momo, I mean, God said to Moses, you want to know my name? I'm going to give it to you because you and I got a tight relationship. Moses, here's my name. Moses, here's my name. Moses, here's my name. I am. Here's my name, Moses. I am. That I am. What kind of name is that, y'all? I know y'all was looking for Jireh and Jehovah and, and Rapha. No, he said, no, 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 no. If you really want to know my name, I am. Ooh, God, this is good. That I am. And he said, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Freedom Church, may we go a little deeper. I'm about to say something. I pray you can catch it. If you can catch it, it'll change your life. Whatever follows the words I am will come looking for you. Say that with me. Say whatever follows the words I am will come looking for me. The next 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I want to spend some time teaching you how to talk to yourself about yourself. <laughs> because the words I am are the two most powerful words that we can utter out of our mouth. Because when we say I am, watch this, when you say I am, you're actually sending out invitations to whatever follows these words. Every time you say the word I am, you're sending out invitations to whatever follows the words I am. Somebody say, when I say I am, I'm sending, out I'm sending out invitations. invitations. Say every time I say the words, I, the words, I, am, I am, I'm opening, I'm opening doors. doors. Teach Holy Ghost. I dare somebody to say for what? what? You're opening doors for whatever follows the I am that you speak. Somebody got to catch this. Somebody going to start understanding some things in their life. Are you serious, Pastor? I'm so serious. See, I am is a double-edged sword. I am is a double-edged sword. What do you mean, Romans 4 and 17? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Don't miss this. In the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead. Here it is, freedom. And calleth those things which are not as though they... We're going to get there together, I promise you. God says, you and I have an ability that most of us have not been trained to use. We have been taught by society. That's why you got to watch society because society will keep you from tapping into your power. Society has taught you to look at a situation and say these words. It is what it is. Come on, somebody. You've already said it a hundred times already. Well, child, it just, it is what it is. I do not say those words if what it is ain't what I want. Good God Almighty. You have never heard me look at a bad situation and say, well, it is what it is. Pastor, why don't you say that? Because it ain't what it is unless it's what I want it to be. And if it ain't what I want it to be, I got the power to call those things that are not as though they were. <laughs> Can I go deeper? I said, Father, help me help the people. He said, tell them this, son. Your words are the interior decorators of your future. Oh, I'm starting to feel this side now. Y'all coming along, huh? I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, oh, your words are the interior decorators of your future. Okay, I just, I, I forgot where I was. I forgot where I was. Because somebody's saying, man, what is an interior decorator? I, I feel you, I feel you, I feel, I feel An interior decorator is, is, is a person that you can hire 
to come into your house or your habitation. And you don't have to know anything about color schemes and color palettes and right, right. textures of cloths. And you don't have to know anything about canvases for painting and decorations. You can hire an interior decorator. And if your money's right, because they're not cheap. They can come into your space and you can describe, I'm about to make myself happy, God. You can tell them what you want. <laughs> Even though you don't know how to do it yourself. You can tell, you can describe them. You know, I want this room to have a relaxed mood. I, I want this room to, to be vibrant with life. Okay, and they listen, watch this, to what you say. I'm preaching, bend your amen. They listen to what you say, they take your information about what you desire, and then they leave you and they go shopping. Preach Holy Ghost. They go shopping to buy the things that will best describe and fit what you want. They go get the stuff and you let them in and you get out of their way and they do their thug thizzle. I mean, they do their thing, amen somebody? And when they're finished, they bring you into your own house, into whatever room they have decorated, and they say, okay, close your eyes. That's right. When I count to three, I want you to open your eyes and see what I've done. One, two, three. And you open your eyes, you're like, oh. That's you clutching your pearls just in case you get that. Oh my God. It's beautiful. This is, this is better than I imagined. You took what I described, watch this, and you manifested it in my house. Okay, some of y'all a little too slow for me. I stopped by to tell you that if you choose your words properly, angels are standing by listening to what we say to carry out the words of our mouth. And if you speak the thing right concerning your future, not your present, not your day, what? What are you saying about your future? Because most of y'all talking about your present too much. It's this, it's that. Honey, I don't talk about my present. I talk about my future. I say what it's going to be. I say what I'm going to have. I say what I'm going to do. But you got to be careful. You can't, you can't be around no rotten mouth saints. I ain't going to get but two folk to stand, so I'm going to preach to them. Amen, somebody. And I said saints because everybody in the church ain't got faith. Everybody in the church don't believe what the Bible says. Everybody in the church don't have big dreams. And when you start talking about your future, it's some stinking my saints will tell you, no, no. You from Dooley, you can't have all of that. You alive and your breath stinks. Come on, come on. Some of y'all need to get the Listerine ministry going on in your life. Because I don't care about what you think That's about right. my future. That's right. That's right. Another conversation I had with my son, we were flying back, and, 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 and I thought about the three times I attempted to commit suicide. Not once, not twice, three times. Never wrote a note, never cried out. Every time it happened, people were shocked. And I said to my son, I am so thankful and grateful that I did not succeed in taking my life at a time when I could not see a brighter future. Because I could not see where I am today. And some of y'all can't see your future, but your future is a thousand times better than your present. You gotta speak over it, you gotta send an invitation, you gotta open a door, and you gotta call those things that are not as though they pay. Without anybody's permission. I got the Holy Ghost decorating my future right now. And if you know anything about me, I'm not cheap. Why do y'all dream on a budget? Help them, Holy Ghost, they're looking goofy. Why do you pray on a budget? Lord, if you can. If you will, Father. If you, if you can see your way, Lord Jesus. I'd like enough money just to make it to the end of the month. God be like, I'm not even answering that prayer. Amen, somebody? Yeah, right. Folks, we serve a big God that's looking for big prayers. Why? Because big things popping and little things stop. I'm sorry, I got lost. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> little T.I. slipped in on me. Amen, somebody? 
Wilding on these haters, sucker. Losing not enough. I'm sorry, y'all pray for me. I'll pray for me. Y'all ain't ready, man. Big bank, take little bank. You got to start thinking big, praying big, believing big, and speaking bigger than where you are. Say my words are the interior decorators of my future. The Holy Ghost is here. Here's what I want to tell you, Brother Oliver. Love you. You get to choose what follows your I am. Y'all not going to rush me. You get to choose what follows your I am. So you got to make a choice. You're either going to use your I am to assassinate or you're going to use your I am to create. You'll get it. What do you mean, Pastor Troy? When I feel bad, when I feel defeated, when I feel sick, I will not be speaking out of my feelings. Matter of fact, why don't you say that? Say, when I feel bad, when I feel sick, this is your declaration. When I feel defeated, starting today, I will not speak out of my feelings. I will speak out of my I am. Somebody say, why? Repeat this. Say, because my I am is greater than my feelings. Get out your feelings and get in your I am's, baby. You want to know what's going on with Pastor Troy? Baby, I'm in my I am's, amen. As a matter of fact, it's the I am's for me, amen, somebody. I'm all in my I am's. I'm no longer in my feelings. I'm no longer in what you think. I'm no longer in what you're feeling. I'm in my I am's because if God said I am, then baby, I am that I am. Y'all ain't ready for it. Y'all ain't ready for it, but you might want to get ready. I feel good. Oh, it's the I am for me, baby. So listen to me, I'm almost done. When you say I am, and y'all got to catch this, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pop you. When you say your I am, it's on the screen. I want y'all to see this. You are also saying God's name. I need freedom to catch this. I, be, I just told you the word of God is double-edged sword, right? told you your word is double edged sword. So when you say I am, you're not just saying I am. God told you that's his name. So when you say I am, you're actually summoning God. I wish I had a church. Though you might be talking about yourself, God said, wait, you said my name. Let me see what you're talking about. When you say the words I am, you're sending out an invitation. And when you say the words I am, you're opening a door. How many of y'all know that you've opened some doors. How many know you've opened some doors that you probably should have never opened? How many know you've opened some doors that you need to close right here, right now? Stand up on your feet really quick and say, today is the day that I will close every door that I should not have opened. Today is the day that I declare I am healed by his stripes. I am blessed and highly favored. I am more than enough. Now give God praise if you believe it. Because it's the I am for me, baby. Do not damn your life using I am's in the wrong way. Stop saying I am sick. I am lonely. I am ugly. Can I bless y'all with something? When you say I am, whatever you say come looking for you. So when you say I am fat, calories come looking for you. You ain't going to clap, but I'm trying to help you. When you say I am, whatever you say after I am, come looking for you. When you say I'm ugly, depression come looking for you. I'm helping you understand your life. Huh. When you say I am broke, more poverty, come looking. Because you know, I am, whatever follows I am, come looking for you. Oh, you broke? Here I go. I don't call those things that are all. If they're not what I wanted to be, the devil is a lie. If I'm broke, you'll never hear me say it. I'm going to say I'm blessed and financially prosperous. 
Every day I wake up, one of the things I say is that I am a billionaire philanthropist. I am a billionaire philanthropist. I am a billionaire for what, what do you mean? I've got a billion dollars and all I do is give it away. I say that every single, y'all ain't got a clap. You ain't got a clap. I used to say I'm a millionaire, but I already touched a million. You ain't got a clap. I don't care nothing about y'all looking at me like that no more. I'm in my I am's now. I was declaring that I was a millionaire when they was cutting off my lights, when they was repoing my vehicle. There goes another one. I am a millionaire in Jesus' name. And I'm not a millionaire because I want to flex on y'all. I'm a millionaire because I want to be a blessing to somebody. I'm a millionaire because I want to take care of my family. See, your reason for you wanting to be something has a whole lot to do with whether or not you ever be that thing. Somebody got to get your I am straight. Because whatever follows I am, it comes looking for you. And I can look at this audience and say a lot of it's found you. It's found you. Because you invited it. You opened the door. Well, I, I, was just, I was just saying what I saw. I was just saying what I felt. How that working for you? Speak those things that are not as though they be. If you got a car in the parking lot that is not the car you want, when you get to it today, have a conversation with it. You think I'm lying? I'm not playing with y'all. Have a conversation. Say, you know what? I appreciate you. But I am better than this. I am bigger than this. I am more luxurious than this. I appreciate all the mileage that you brought me from. But I am about to drive something better. I'm about to drive something smoother. I'm about to drive. God ain't got no problem with you driving something nice. If you know how to act when you get it. I clap, you ain't gotta clap. I'm preaching on so many levels. You better get it and you better not miss next Sunday. I'm teaching a master class called I Am because I Am are the two most powerful words that God has given us. Because it opens doors. And I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God. See, the Bible said he'll give you the desires of the heart. Sure, folk like to make that all spiritual stuff. Don't you know the better you look, the better your God looks? Which is why you got to stop going to Walmart looking like a hot mess. Amen, somebody? You don't like it, but I got to help you. We represent the kingdom of God. And you may not have on a three-piece suit or a night dress, but you can take that button off your head, sis. Oh, I know you ain't going to come back next Sunday, so I got to get you this Sunday. Take that bonnet off your head. Looking like you just left the cotton field. And I know you don't like it, but you don't understand. My hair wasn't right. Honey, honey, let me tell you something. That bonnet is not the move. Amen. It does not speak kingdom. I done lost my clouds now. I represent the kingdom of God. If I got on a if I if I got on a sweatsuit, I promise you, I'm gonna look like kingdom. Amen, somebody. I'm trying to show y'all something different in this area. I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting. If you don't see that it's possible. Born in Vianna, Georgia, went to high school in Perry, Georgia, living in Warner Robin. Don't tell me what God can't do. We serve a God that is abundant, that is more than enough. We serve a God that will match our faith, but you got to get your faith up and get your doubt down. How did you do it, PT? I started saying I am. Every morning I wake up, I wake up, I throw my legs out of the bed, I sit on the edge of my bed. And when I get 10 toes down on the ground, yeah. every morning goes like this. Father God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Yeah. Thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Yeah. Thank you that my wife is healed in Jesus' name. This is every morning. Yeah. Then I start my I am's. I do, I've been doing this for years. I start my I am. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am wise. That's my first set of I am. I am blessed going in. I am blessed coming out. That's my second set of I am. 
I am cute, handsome, and attractive. That's my third set of I am, because I used to have low self-esteem. You can clap or not clap. I am cute, handsome, and attractive. I am. You hear me, cuz? You're looking at somebody that tried to commit suicide because he thought he was the ugliest person on the planet. But I am rewired my brain and changed my life. When the day go by, this woman don't say these words. Come on now. I am healed. Every day she says those words. I am healed. What I am do you need to say today and stand on it ten toes down? Everybody's got a different I am. But baby, brother, if I was you, I'd find my I am and I would yell it from the top of the mountain and I wouldn't care what nobody thought. I am this, I am that, I am what God says I am because I am opens doors, but I am also calls God's name. I got to go. Whatever follows I am is looking for you. And some of y'all got to cancel some of those I am's that you've already spoken. Stop saying I am lonely. Stop saying I am old. You ever wonder how we get in some of the stuff we get into? I started this entire dissertation of teaching telling you that death and life is in the power of your tongue. Let, let me help some of y'all. Can nobody curse you? Can nobody put, I know, I know some of y'all from Haiti and, and you from across the water. Can't nobody put no hex on you. The only reason a hex works is because you believe the hex works. They only believe that voodoo worked on you because you believe when they poke the dog. Oh, I felt something. Poke the dog. I don't feel nothing. You can't curse me because I'm already blessed. And you can't curse me because I bless myself. What God looked like giving you more power to speak over my life than he gave me to speak over my life? That's crazy. So can't nobody curse you. But you better believe you can curse you. But you can also bless yourself. Y'all gotta stop worrying about what people say and what people think when you bless yourself. Everybody's standing. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Who am I preaching to today? Don't play with me. Who am I preaching to today? Raise your hand if you're sure. If I ain't get you today, come back next Sunday. I swear for God, I got a word for you. Somebody say, this is, this is the master class. Master class. And, today, and today, I'm learning, I'm learning about, the danger about the danger and the power, and the power of, I am. of I am. How many of y'all learned something today? Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He's here, mother. Ah.